Thursday, September 16th, regular meeting for the Berwick Planning Board. If you would all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce our board members tonight. <coughs> to my left, we have Mr. Paul Amatucci, and from the right, Phil Roy, Allison Hurlihy, and our vice chairman, Mike LaRue. Um, we've got our town manager, former town planner, James Bellissimo here, and we've got Hello. our code enforcement officer, Jenny McCabe here. We have a special guest in the audience today, Paul Bovere is here, gracing us with his presence. We haven't seen him in this room in a little bit, so it's good to see you, Paul. Um, and just before I start the public hearing, I would like to just make a, a movement on the agenda to move the Great Falls um, in old business just to the end of the agenda. So we're just going to hop you guys down at the end so you can have all the time in the world. <laughs> um, and that being said, I'm going to open up the public, um, public hearing. And this public hearing is for the subdivision amendment, which is creating one lot on Cemetery Road um, that is in the R2 zone. So if you um, have anything to say about that, please come up to the podium, state your name and address. All right, seeing nobody come up, I'm going to close the public hearing for the subdivision amendment and move on to public comment. The public comment session is open to anybody um, who lives or owns property in the town of Berwick under the purview of the Berwick Planning Board. The public comment session is not open to any active application or agenda items. That being said, I invite you to come on up to the podium. And just please state your name and um, your address for the record, please. Okay. And I live on Alma and North Lane. Okay. And I'd like to know when I can speak about the Pine Hill. Um, the Pine Hill subdivision, the one I'm assuming you're talking about the Moral Farm subdivision. Yes. Yep, so we will be, I'm, it's very likely we'll be setting the public hearing for that tonight. Um, so we will know tonight, I'm assuming, assuming we get through this application and everything looks good, that we will, so it'll be at the public hearing that you can speak about that. You're welcome to send in emails um, in the interim though, so if you've got concerns you would like us to know about, um, feel free to send them in to, can it be yeah, to planning to, to you, planning at- or You can drop off a letter, whatever's yep. easier. We just can't take any public comments um, at this time for it. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Gail. Anybody else for the public comment session? All right, seeing nobody else come forward, I'm going to close the public comment and move on to the approval of minutes from the September 2nd, 2021 meeting. Has anybody, everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah. Yes. All right, any um, changes or did James, no, Jenny did a good job. Oh. No, I don't think I did a good job, oh. so we'll see. <laughs> Paul, yes? I have a change, yeah, on the uh, second page, which is the back of page one, uh, it has uh, a comment by Jerry Grable about the impact to a butters. That was actually by me. Okay. Just to make it clear, when you guys are talking and you have masks on, I know. go and replay it. Yeah. It's hard to know who, so I'm sorry. That's about okay. that. Oh, that's so, a, yeah, that's totally okay. Actually, it's been perfect so long, so. <laughs> it was nice to find something. It's nice to find something. <laughs> 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 I said like, something I thought at I said the said meeting. That. Yeah. Anybody else find anything? Mm -hmm. right, Paul found something in my minutes for about three years straight. Oh, yeah. So. Well, yeah. James, James never got the minutes right when Paul was on the board. There was always, it would be a comma, but it was wrong. <laughs> um, yep. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I move to approve. All right. And a second? Second. All right. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Looks like it is unanimous. Moving on to old business, um, so we're going to look at the subdivision amendment for Cemetery Road first. That is the creation of one lot. Um, and if we didn't have any public hearing questions come up, so. We really just held the public hearing as just to make sure that there's no abutters. That so often, sometimes when we uh, send a public hearing notice out somewhere in the neighborhood can tip us off on something uh, we may not, not have caught. Um, but this seems 
very straightforward and that uh, you have the findings in front of you. There's, there's no conditions. Um, the, the only, there's a stormwater plan that was updated, um, detailed building envelope. So I think we're ready um, for approval of the findings and approval of the application. Okay. I will move to approve the findings. Okay. okay. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further questions about the findings? No? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then we'll need a motion for the conditions. It's good to, like, where are the conditions? But we have no conditions, right? No conditions. No conditions, so we don't need to, we don't need to vote on that. <clears throat> and um, so then we were looking to uh, have a motion for the approval. I'll move that we approve. All right. Motion. <coughs> we'll second. Any further questions? No? Okay. All in favor of approving the uh, <coughs> Cemetery <coughs> Road Amendment? All right. Aye. All right. That's oh unanimous. 5-0. You okay, Allison? Yes. All right. Next on our agenda is the sketch plan meeting for the major subdivision at Pine Hill Road. This is the um, known as the Morrill Farm property. <coughs> if you guys will remember, they um, had come in a few weeks ago for a sketch plan meeting. Okay, we asked right. the developer to go back and bring us a cluster. <coughs> I have water. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> Die. Here, it's fresh. Oh my God, I like thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it, we asked the developer to, who had brought in a, um, a plan to go back to the drawing board and bring us in a plan for cluster development. We got that plan. It, they went from preserving 6.2% of the property as open space to 33%, which is a considerable change. Um, and so, uh, James? Oh, so we're at sketch level today. Um, thank you for... Um, Working with us, um, yeah. That's that's all I have at this at this point. Okay, I've got. Um, well, do, I mean, do you want to? You got anything for us before we start nailing you with questions? Um, <laughs> have no you way. guys all had a chance to look at the, the new cluster? Yes. Yeah, we've all seen it. Um, so you don't need a summary. Or anything. Give us a little summary. Okay. Yeah, if he just pointed yeah, and out. And make sure you talk into the microphone. Real important. Sure. Thank you. So. Um, the property is located in the R2 Transitional Residential District at 127 Pine Hill Road. Um, the main differences between the conventional and the cluster subdivision are that, like you said, it has 612,000 over that of uh, open space that we've added, which is 33% of the property. Um, and a lot of that open space is the agricultural farmland that you like expressed concern with uh, last time we were here. And in addition to that, it also saves a good amount of the area on the outskirts of the property that acts as a buffer, a lot of the forested buffer between the proposed development and the abutters. So, um, and the conventional subdivision has 11,200 square feet of wetland impact, and the uh, cluster only has 7,500. Huge improvement. Like, seriously, huge improvement. So I um, there are some notes from our original memo about um, a recommended full traffic impact study. James, uh, I think that was is that Lee J's memo. Yes, that's Lee J's memo. Oh, so yeah. So that was yeah something. Yeah, we want to see um, that for preliminary. Yep. <coughs> and some other things just for preliminary preliminary to um, think about also is. Um, how will the open space be used? Is that going to be public? Is it going to be for the deeded owners? Um, any deed restrictions or covenants? So is, uh, is there any sound to this thing? <laughs> I'm Please. not hearing any sound. <laughs> I have no idea who that is. Jesse, so. I hear you. Oh, it's, I don't know. I'll put them in the waiting room. Okay. I, I have no idea who that is. Um, so any deed restrictions or covenants? Um, that would be good for a preliminary. And could we schedule a site walk at this point? Or do we wait yeah. for a prelim? Yeah, um, I think us, we could set a site walk. Does, um, we already have one on the second. Mm -hmm. Yep, <coughs> October 21st, I believe. Okay. And then would we schedule the public hearing at that point also? That would be at, after, after the preliminary. preliminary. Okay. 
So we're looking like November. We're looking, Gail, we're looking at around in November for the public hearing for this subdivision. Okay. It'll, it'll, it will likely be the beginning of November. Just so, but it'll be announced, but just so you know. Um, so site walk on the 21st at... Probably 4.30. 4.30 works really well. Does that work for you? September 21st. October, October 21st. 21st. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we are. Uh, yeah. Um, I wanted to point out too, like I know that development in the town is a, is a big deal and it's a hot topic right now. And we do charge impact fees for um, developers to pay for new residences that are brought in. And this this subdivision alone is um, slated to bring in around fifty two thousand dollars in impact fees. So that's real money for our town that buys open space. And it also um, contributes to the recreation uh, department needs. So those are two things that I just like people in town to be aware of. But, um, we can't hear you. Oh, we're muted. Oh. Anybody else Stand have any, any questions or anything before we, we be good. send them off to pre Can you hear us now? Yes, thank you. So are the impact fees, are they found in the ordinance? Or yes, those are in the ordinance. They're at the building permit. Yep. Uh, the October 21st date, just uh, days are getting shorter. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're not pushing ourselves too far out at where we're going to lose daylight. 430 should be good, right? Yeah, it should be good. Okay. Yep. I think it should. Okay. Thank you for being No, keeping. no worries. <laughs> All right. Is that enough time? That's enough time to get the preliminary package together. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you typically like to see in the sidewalk any um, major, you know, where the road is going to be, the center of the road. Usually they mark like the center of the road, center right? Of the road. Yeah. It's pretty common sense. It, you know, we don't we don't go trekking through the woods. Yeah, we're not. The entire, yeah, we're not. We're we not go as far out. as far as we can see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is through a field, so I mean. Yeah. 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 Where our butters are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Moving right along. So we're gonna um, skip to. Yeah. The, we're on preliminary plans for major subdivision at 170 Pine Hill Road. This is the seven multifamily units for the existing building um, in the R1 and R2 zone. We had our site walk there today at 4.30. Uh, no members of the public were in attendance, but the most of the board was there and the engineers were there as well as code enforcement and planning. Um, we talked about uh, the yard has been cleaned up incredibly uh, as our code enforcement officer had requested prior to us taking any action on this the garage on the property is being removed um, and we talked about some other things so I'll let you talk a little bit Neil and then we can. okay uh, yeah, my name is Neil Bozen with civil consultants uh, here on behalf of Jerry Letard um, uh, we have not made any modifications to the plans uh, since we came in for sketch uh, it's, it was, as we discussed last time, it was a previously approved development that we've, uh, we've modified to kind of um, uh, meet all the new requirements that have, have come into play since this was last, come through the board in 2008. Um, there was, uh, last time we were here, uh, it was noted that uh, you know, the water pressure should be, uh, should be you know, checked and, and determined whether or not it was sufficient for the sprinkler system that's provided, and we've, uh, we've gone over it with um, with the staff, and, and it's, kind of de it's been determined that the, the designer of the sprinkler system would be uh, would uh, kind of notify the applicant or the developer if it required booster pumps or anything to, to work uh, for the state requirements. And the state would also uh, also requires a testing of, of the system. So, as far as the site requirements go, I think I think we've we've handled that issue. Um, there was a discrepancy in the. Um, the letters to water and sewer are regarding the number of bedrooms um, on the project and I did contact uh, Jay Wheeler uh, he well Jay Wheeler got back to me and said that they they base everything on number of dwelling units and okay. working kitchens uh, so as far as they're concerned uh, it's two or three bedroom doesn't matter when they're determining 
uh, capacity. Uh, so that that was handled. I believe I forwarded that over to James. I'm not sure if I got Jen on that one too. But, um, I got it. Okay. Um, and uh, I also I did speak with um, the superintendent of schools, Audra, um, at a, another meeting we had, and I uh, discussed it. And I I requested a uh, written. Uh, written you know authorization or, or a sign off on student capacity mm -hmm. I haven't received the written authorization yet uh, but we just did it over discussion I'm, I'm sure I'll have that within in the next few days to get it in for the for the final uh, the final application the final submission beyond that uh, as was discussed uh, the applicants done quite a bit of work uh, you know cleaning up the site out there and trying to get that uh, up to a point where it's uh, where it's in a condition where it's where the, the town and the board would feel comfortable uh, moving forward with the application. So I guess with that, I'll open up to any further questions. So some of the things um, that we talked about that we're going to put on the prelim approval um, are, well, I want to clarify, because a lot of people have asked me, is this building condemned? It is condemned. That doesn't preclude them from coming to the board. It just precludes somebody from living in the building. Um, so some of the things are, and we've, we talked about um, this at the site walk, but um, we would like the height of the building professionally measured. We would let, and then Jen, right before and after the grading. Yeah, so before they do any grading. Are you on a microphone? Oh, probably not. Can I borrow that first? Here you go. <laughs> Thanks. Testing, no, just kidding. Um, yeah, so we want the height of the building measured pre-fill, and then after the grade, um, code says it's 10 feet and six, six inches and 10 feet. Once they get the final grade on, we're going to remeasure the building and just make sure that we meet that requirement. We don't expect it to meet the requirement before you bring in the fill, so I want to make that clear. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have that. Um, we would like a review of the structural integrity of the building uh, by an engineer, and we would like that stamped. Okay. Um, we would like the applicant to know that the building permit will start with a framing inspection, so to expect that. Um, we talked about having the doors on the back of the building barred immediately. That needs to be done. Yes. Something that I think is important around here is there uh, looks like there'll be a lot of mature trees removed from that property, and we would like to see a, a native tree planted. It doesn't have to be in the same spot, but to replace those trees that are removed. Would you want that on uh, the final plan designated with heights and, and that'd space? That would be great. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. You know, those big trees close to the road slow traffic down, actually. I mean, we know this because we've done so much of this study. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I get it. You probably don't want to put them right, right next near the road, but as close to the road as possible because it does keep the, <coughs> the traffic slower on Pine Hill Road for whatever reason. Um, so that is what I have. What, what objective quality evidence are we requiring for the uh, water pressure? issue for the, as it pertains to the fire main? They, um, they have determined that that's going to be under the fire marshal and okay. a state. Um, a, a state. So that's not so our that's line not at all? Our, yeah, okay. This isn't yep. under our yep. purview. Yep. Mr. LaRue. <clears throat> um, the one thing that I kind of saw was on the driveway behind it, the um, right next to where like the secondary parking is, if there could be some sort of like screening in between the the actual yeah right, right there. there it just seemed like if there's going to be a lot of people there it'd kind of be a little safer to kind of slow people from going on that road that's true that's that's to services that even if it's just a couple them. bushes or something just to get you know. something you know not yeah not our varieties, but something hardy right, right that will just kind of fill it a little yeah. bit i think yeah we can we can incorporate that into the, into okay. the plan once we when we put the uh, the other plantings in there yep, yep. yeah other than that, it seemed pretty straightforward for me. Paul, you're at the site walk. Yeah, the, uh, there was some conversation about, uh, and this might be handled by the structural engineer, but there seemed to be some cracks in the foundation, and uh, there had been some water infiltration in the building. So we'd want that sorted out to find out, are there, uh, do we have structural integrity on the, on the foundation? But that's probably part of Imagine. this the purview for, for site plan or for getting the final building for final right yeah for final, for final. yeah okay. we usually just don't we don't usually address some of the, the structural building issues when we're doing the site process i just want to see what yep what are yeah. we incorporate we've we discussed plans. it and that's what with code right or that's yeah that's yep. what that's what we would like to require for that building 
Bill, do you have any questions? I do not. Allison? All right. I guess I got a couple yeah. things. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, on the mold issue, oh, yeah. I know Art provided us with a mold study, and we'll take a good look at that, Lee we'll take a good look at that to just make sure it's sufficient. Uh, if it's not, then we'll want a full mold study from bottom floor to top floor. And then um, I think during construction interior to the building, we're going to want um, weekly inspections. Um, signed off. I think it's okay if Art signs off on them weekly. And then for the site work, uh, I think we could do bi-weekly, and I think it's okay if Civil Consultants signs off on that. Yep. Um, yeah, that's all I have. All right. Got all that, Neil? Is this all, uh, <laughs> we generally don't uh, put a lot of this stuff on our was. site plans and yeah. uh, as notes, so I just want to be sure that you're going to want to see all of this noted on that on that site plan. Yeah, I we met with planning or I met with planning and code enforcement and discussed this ahead of time. And okay, that's, that's what they would like to see. Okay. Neil, if you have any further questions, feel free to schedule a time to meet with okay, us yeah, as well. Okay. Great too. Yep. Thank yeah. you. All right. Moving on. Look at how we're cooking through this today. Um, so I'm going to recuse myself at this time because the next applicant is a client of mine um, and I'm going to turn over the gavel to Mr. LaRue. Uh, All right, so we're at a sketch plan, major subdivision, phase four heritage drive, R43-5 Steve Clement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Lou Chamberlain from Atar Engineering, and I'm representing Steve Clement tonight on this uh, amended subdivision. And we're here with phase four of Heritage Estates. Uh, Heritage Estates is a, an established subdivision in town that has had three phases uh, constructed to date, I think starting back in early the early 2000s. Um, they are, the roads currently serving it are Heritage Drive and Elmwood Drive. And we're here with 18 additional lots that would be constructed as part of phase four. And it would connect those two roads. So we'd have a, a through road from um, School Street up to Cranberry Meadow Road. And 18 additional lots between 60 and 80,000 square feet, single family, all served by Subsurface wastewater disposal systems and private wells, uh, nice, nice lots. And it would entail the construction of about 2,700 feet of, of paved road with a similar section to what's in the, the subdivision uh, paved sidewalk as well for that. And so we have submitted um, all the materials for, I believe, preliminary and final plan. There's quite a, an application package there. Yep. We have been in front of the DEP uh, with our permit application, I think since April, and they've been taking a while to review our stormwater. I did hear from them last week, and I think we are rising to the to the top of the review pile, so that's good news. Um, in the application package, there's a nitrate report, high-intensity soil survey, there's a stormwater management report, there is an Army Corps of Engineers permit for a few wetland impacts in the project. Um, there's a revised document of covenants and restrictions for the homeowners association to encompass these new lots. And we welcome any questions that you have. If you wanted to have a site walk, we'd be glad to uh, show you around. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I have a question. Is, is this going to, this is a private, two private roads right now? Or is, is this going to, my question is, is the town going to eventually adopt this for plowing? Or is this going to be? So, and I'm going to let Steve jump in if I say something wrong, but I believe Heritage Drive is, is has oh. been turned over to the town. Okay. I don't right. believe Elmwood Drive has been turned over to the town. Could be wrong. You're right. Correct. Okay. And as for the future, I would think that the intention is to, to adopt it. Over. Okay. 
I brought, I brought it in earlier for the yeah. grandfather to oh. take the one that was complete. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. But thank you. Okay. Yeah, it connects through, so it's able to be taken over anyways. Yeah. I was just curious. Yep. Do you guys have a preferred say walk date? Because we're pretty booked out, but. Anytime's good for me. Sooner the better, I guess. Mm -hmm. But you know, we understand that. We, we could, I mean, we've done Saturday site walks and stuff like that before. Since we're looking into November, it wouldn't, if we're Sunday morning yeah. site walk, like, I'm, I'm open to that if anybody else on Florida. Do you want me to, I can get back to everyone on Monday and take a look at our calendars. We can, we can figure something out. That's great. That works. Yep. Something before November. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'll be in touch. Okay. So this is just a sketch plan, so that's pretty yep. much it. Yep. All right, great. Thank great. you. Yep. So we'll wait for the sidewalk and yep. from there. Yep. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Now Nicole is coming back. <laughs> and Allison's going to repeat her song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I'm back in the room. We're going to Allison Hurley from um, So the next item on our agenda is the site plan review for 20 Sullivan Street, uh, Great Falls Construction. Yay! <laughs> I want to start. <laughs> I got notes. I want to start by saying, first of all, that this, um, this meeting is 10 years in the making. I know I, I was going back through. I, I, I was going back through my emails and when I got involved was in 2014 and I know it was before then. Um, but this Thank board, you. Paul Bovaire included, worked uh, just in designing our downtown overlay. We worked for eight months straight. We met, remember we met every week? Remember we met over the 4th of July? Like we met when we, when we normally have off. Um, we worked holidays to get it done and it, you know we've worked our tails off so we're happy to see that you guys have been working your tails off. Now I'm going to let you talk. Excellent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, my name is John Smith with Great Falls Construction, and I just wanted to do a few um, introductory comments, and then um, I was going to turn it over to our engineer who's here tonight. Tonight I have with me, Cindy is with me from Great Falls, and Julie with Great Falls, and Craig is with Surveyor Technics, who's done the engineering for us on this project. <coughs> so. Um, uh, you know, in a nutshell, I, I, again, I'm John Smith with Great Falls. We've um, been doing business in Maine for the last 35-ish years, and I just uh, a, a small family-owned company, approximately 50 employees, and I really just extremely excited to be here tonight. I think um, I know you just uh, referenced that it's been a long time coming, and uh, for us, it seems like it's been a long time, and it's just a drop in the bucket compared to this entire timeline of this project. Um, so it really, for us, after Sin and I thought about this for quite some time, it was actually Halloween, October 31st of 2019, that we purchased the property. And so we're coming up on two years, right, pretty soon here. Um, and in that time period, I think for those that, that haven't been plugged in, they might be wondering what's going on, but. Um, I'd like to go through just a quick set of bullet points on what we've been doing over the last two years. Um, we've hosted a dozen uh, listening sessions and update sessions with the community members and are really grateful for all the community input and support that we've heard for the project. We've, uh, we moved to the design phase of the project and we confirmed which buildings would be removed, which ones were to stay, ultimately only one is staying and we removed all of the other buildings on the property. We've uh, demolished those, as, as you've seen, and that was, I think, over 70,000 square feet and just tons and tons of material that's been um, processed and recycled and uh, is still being processed on site, as many of you have probably seen there. Um, we've submitted our application to the DEP. The prior applicant uh, mentioned that the, the DEP certainly has a backlog. We fully anticipate a six-month process with the DEP, and I, what are we, two months into that, Craig, approximately, or a month, month, a month, month or two into it, so. Um, but that was on a critical path to get that done. We've got a traffic movement 
plan submitted just recently, and um, so that's underway and, and um, fully submitted at this point. We are, and we're here tonight to continue the planning process. Like I said, very excited to be here and um, just, just talk about this process. Um, our, the current proposed plan includes uh, about 73,000 square feet of commercial space over, uh, I think it's 27 spaces, that's what I have in my head here. About 246,000 square feet of residential space spread over 260 units. It includes, um, if you count the parking in and around the property, we're looking at slightly over 400 parking spaces with a culmination of the private spaces that we that are existing, that we're building, and, and add the public spaces in the immediate vicinity of the project. Uh, and so, um, as I mentioned, we're bringing this, uh, this plan before you tonight. We still have some work to do. Um, we, we're aware of that, and I think uh, one of the, you know, some of the big things we'll be looking at um, now that we've sort of locked down this plan and have it submitted is the phasing schedule on it. Um, it's going to be an important uh, thing for us to figure out because we are going to be moving forward in the interim on the existing L-shaped building that's there. We've got on a separate track, we've been working on um, planning and design, engineering and permitting for that, and we're pretty much at the end of the road with what we need for permits and uh, and design. So we'll be moving ahead with that uh, sort of on a, on a separate path to this particular overall project. Uh, and so, and then I'm not sure, you know, we'll have other things I'm sure as we discuss this and, and move through the process. And um, so I think other than saying we're really just excited to be here, I'm, I'm available for questions, but I do want to turn it over to Craig to come up and uh, talk maybe a little bit more in detail on any engineering. And I'll be back up for any questions. Good evening. Hi. My name is Craig Burgess, and I work with Sebago Technics. And I have to say, this is one of the funner projects that myself and my team have ever worked on. Um, it's really rewarding to be able to work on something that has such an important influence on the town. So we, we really took it seriously and did our best to pull together a complete application and plan set. As John mentioned, we know that there are some things that still need to be addressed. So tonight we're really looking for some preliminary feedback from the board. Um, what, what do you see? What changes would you recommend? We received some comments from James, and as John noted, one of those is the phasing, and we will certainly evaluate that as well. The project in total will create approximately five and a half acres of new impervious acreage. The total lot size is 8.03 acres, and the amount of open space on this will exceed 25%. My calculations um, come up with approximately 36%, so the phasing plan that was included, I think, showed 26, but the overall parcel acreage was included the lot across the street, so that was incorrect. The development will be served by two roadways to be known as Main Street and Edgeway. Main Street will extend between School Street and Sullivan, and Edgeway will, will be served from Wilson Street directly opposite the public safety entry. Um, we did that intentionally so that it lined up across, it's just better, better design we thought. The original sketch plan that we presented to the board I think back in January or beginning of the year, um, was very similar to what you're looking at today. The major changes you'll notice is the, the building along Sullivan and at the corner of Sullivan and Wilson, at one point that was shown as one big block. And I think the feedback we received from the board at the beginning of the year was to take a look at uh, showing smaller building footprints. At that time, I know that there was a standard for, for a maximum building footprint size, and I think that has since changed a little bit. So we, we took that big block and we divided that up into four or five buildings. I think it was all shown as one there at the corner. The other area that we, that we took a much stronger look at and made some changes to was the coffee drive through and, and the bank drive through areas. Um, that, was, that was a hard area to design and we, we, we fought with that design quite a bit, and ultimately we came up with this as, as the best use of that area for those two buildings. 
That area right there, that's, that will be served by, the, the coffee and the bank will be served by a drive aisle with parking on both sides. And then once it gets close to the coffee shop, that will become like a one way. So that will be noted with signage. We have submitted the traffic movement permit. I know that that's a big, that's a big item because our plan right now doesn't show any off-site improvements. We do recognize that there will be, at, at, at a minimum, the island right there on Sullivan Street, that will be removed. So as part of the MDOT process, we've submitted the application a couple days ago. Main DOT is gonna look at this and they're gonna come back with their recommendations, their initial recommendations. So they're certainly gonna come back with recommendations for that. And they're also going to look at all the nearby intersections that will be affected by this project. In total, it's going to create more than 200 peak trips. So it's certainly a, it's, it's certainly a generator of traffic in this area. And that's being closely looked at by our team of traffic engineers at Sebago and also main DOT. So we did our best to comply with the village overlay standards. We know that there was a lot of thought put into that. And tonight we'd like to see if, if, if you think that this plan generally complies with those standards. The, the, there were some questions about parking and, and we, we feel that the parking shown here exceeds the local standard within that, within that zone. I know that we do show some um, parking within part, uh, a larger parking areas and along Main Street. But we really had to gain as much parking as we could here. We, there's approximately 260 residential units. So we really needed to, and, and those residential units will include a mix of studio apartments, one bedroom and two bedroom. So those numbers may change from the time we, we submit our next um, submission of this and, and respond to your comments. But we've done our best to maximize the park in here, but not take away from the site. We, we didn't want to have all parking on this site. And we know that that the residential, well, the, the commercial and restaurant space, that's exempt from parking. So we'll rely on some of the parking to serve this community to rely on the downtown and the avail available parking along all the adjacent streets here. So that's gonna be important to this project in the, in, in the overall grand scheme of it is this is going to become a downtown area, and so it's, it's going to be a very walkable community. You'll notice that we have walkways throughout the entire site, and we had a greenway stemming from the south all the way up to the north, combination of green space and walkways, and I know that that was broken up by Main Street and some other paved areas, but the intent was to try to keep a main greenway going up from south to north through the site. There will be a memorial site built on the southern end of the site to uh, pay tribute to the rich heritage and history of the site. And we understand that there are, the town currently has some plans to, uh, to, to redo that intersection there. So I think one of the things that we'll do moving forward is we're, we're gonna take a closer look at bringing in that that design of that intersection to this plan to better see how it aligns with this design. We know that we know that this area over here will be slightly, it's the, the curve gets a little bit bigger, so it's going to be clipped a little bit. The utilities were this is a this is a site with contaminated soils. So the underlying goal here was to reduce utility trenches to the greatest extent practicable. You'll notice that with the water and sanitary, we, we tried to, rather than including big mains going up and down the roadways, we tried to do direct taps into the, into the surrounding infrastructure. That was, that was a great benefit of this project site, was all of that infrastructure that's in place on all sides of it. So we will try to do direct taps where it's shown in the plans, but we do have to extend a main up Main Street for a portion to serve some of the back, the back buildings. And I forgot to mention at the beginning that th there's some really cool elements to this site. And one of those is, is the bridge, right as you start to come down Main Street from, down, from um, Town Hall, there will be a bridge right there. And as you, as you continue up Main Street, that building, I think it's building two and four, two and four Main Street, that's actually gonna be 
that's actually going to be one building, but there's going to be an area where cars can move under it. And then there's also a whole second and, and third level that will be um, extend out over that a, a row of parking. Uh, gas will not be part of this project. We just determined that it's not feasible to extend gas to this location, so we are not considering gas at this time. Uh, power and other underground telecommunication utilities. At this time, we're still working with CMP on that. What we want to do, and we, we need to confirm with, with Central Main Power, did I say DEP, sorry. We need to confirm with Central Main Power We'd like to do pole mounted transformers and then bring the utilities underground to the buildings. That's what we want to do just to reduce additional trenching on the site. So the goal is, and we should have that on the next iteration of the plans, is to extend power underground from all of the surrounding utility poles and bring it straight into the buildings just to, so we don't have a main corridor run through the site just to. The, we we're working with Credere to evaluate the site and come up with recommendations for soil management and reducing the, the amount of trenches, utility trenches is one of those items. Submitted with the plan set was a robust landscape plan. Um, there, there are a lot of trees and other plants proposed and we'll, we'll closely evaluate that as with some of the changes that we, we may make. But one of the areas that we're looking at for the public to be able to utilize this site is the area to the south is the area to the south over here and this whole area in here is is designed so that the public can use this whether it be for a, a concert or just a, a gathering space it's designed with that in mind over in this area of the site right here um, this building hasn't been nailed down yet as far as the exact footprint. We're inclu including a placeholder for now for what Great Falls is thinking in this area. But for our DEP submission, it's really, we, we included this for the impervious area, and that's important for stormwater management. The stormwater management will be treated using LID techniques as required within the village overlay zone. And before we dove deep into the design here, we took a really close look at stormwater management. You'll notice that the stormwater piping, that's really the majority of the utility trench work is the amount of, of, of storm drain pipe in this site. And we tried to minimize that as much as we could, but there's we had to ultimately handle runoff and treat runoff from 60% of the developed surface. And we did that using filter tree filters. If you were to go out to the like, Thompson Point area, that's a site, that's a good example of where they solely use tree filters. And there really weren't too many best management practices, practices uh, at our disposal for treatment. Um, we had tree filters, we could have used another proprietary device called a focal point or rain gardens. Um, ultimately, the rain gardens we didn't feel was best for this because it would, really, it would really take up a lot of space in that usable green area. And we felt that that green area was more important for the, for the public to be able to use. So we didn't use rain gardens. And then um, we also considered like a porous pavement, permeable pavers. But ultimately, those, those, those type of surfaces require a lot of maintenance. And that would become an issue on a site that's so heavily trafficked like this. So we ended up choosing tree filters, and there will be 16 tree filters that will manage runoff from the parking surface and the buildings. At the, at the onset of the project, the Public Works Department identified the existing culvert, it's an existing 36 inch culvert at Wilson Street, as an area where there's a known drainage issue. Anything beyond the 10-year rainfall event, I was told that it floods. So we put together our stormwater modeling to, to um, predict so at, beyond the 10-year storm event, it would show an inch or two going over. So that formed the basis of our stormwater model. And what the model showed us is that that pipe was undersized and that it needed to be at least a 48-inch pipe or, or bigger. Going to a 48-inch pipe, there wasn't enough cover there, so we ended up going with a box culvert design 
So there will be a box culvert, I believe it's a five foot wide box culvert installed at Wilson Street. And then the remainder of the pipe running through the site that carries, there's an existing stream that carries the runoff from the stream will be a 60 inch pipe. So there'll be a 60 inch pipe going from the, running from the north end of the site to the south end of the site. And then all of the tree filters and other catch basins will tap, will tap into that 60 inch pipe. As John mentioned, we, we submitted our application to DEP about a month, month and a half ago. We hope, really hope that it takes less than six months. We know how critical it is to get this underway. And I think that's going to be, that and the main DOT permit that we submitted will be on the same track. So we really hope that we have approvals, ideally in January or February for this, so that Great Falls can get going. Uh, with that said, I'm here to answer any questions that you have, and, and same with the Great Falls team. Thank you. Awesome. I, I have a question about the wastewater management, because you mentioned earlier in your presentation there, there's a, a level of apprehension about uh, ground utilities due, due to the existing hazmat. So by doing your wastewater runoff, how, how are you mitigating any uh, contamination or leaching with the wastewater? If, if you're, in, in one breath you say we're apprehensive about doing in-ground utilities, but then, okay, we're gonna have managed runoff. It just, it, th those two seem to not go well together. So I, I just, um, unless I'm missing something. I guess I don't fully understand the question. So we, we the soil management, the, the, the soil that you move below the cap needs to stay on site. Okay. And when you, when you, when you dig that soil, that has to be replaced with with a better clean soil above the utilities. Gotcha. So we tried our best to minimize the amount of excavation below that that cap. Okay. Um, but with the storm drainage, we had really no choice except there's a lot of there's a lot of closed drainage pipe on the site to carry the runoff. I gotcha. Um, okay. There's very minimal um, under drains on the site. The buildings will have foundation drains, but. Um, that's how we try to mitigate the movement, the excavation of soil on the site. I got you. I don't know if that answers your, your question. It does, and I'm probably speaking to my na naivety about how this all works, but I, in one breath, when, when you're saying we can't dig the soil to put in utilities, and then we're talking about drainage, that was my concern, is are we in any way going to be using the wastewater drainage to, to spread that contamination anywhere else. That, that would be my concern. Not, not the, the stormwater, pretty much what they're doing is they're inheriting a ton of water up Pine Hill. Yep. And it's just a, it's a pipe. So all the stormwater is pretty much piped underneath the site. Gotcha. So okay. it's, it's all piping. It's pretty much a stream that goes. Okay. You can tell better than I can. <laughs> I was, yeah, no worries. My concern was like runoff, you, you know. Yeah. Like I said, I'm probably overly naive about the process. No, that's fine. But in a sense, it's almost uh, you know, two separate uh, things, really. The, the stormwater that we're collecting on site, mm -hmm. where we're collecting it, it's, it's roof runoff or it's from the parking lots, and it drains into through the tree filters, which filter that water initially. Mm -hmm. And then it goes through a pipe and then into the culvert and then downstream like it did. So it doesn't connect, it doesn't touch the anything underneath the surface. It's all surface runoff. Okay. And the there's also some water flowing through the pipe now, but that's what James just alluded to. It's coming from up, upstream somewhere and just flowing through. Gotcha. So what we're going to add to it is just what we collect from surface runoff run through the tree filters almost entirely, I think, right? And then um, I think the only, uh, you know, scenario that you're talking about uh, that might have an impact is going to be um, in the uh, uh, in the in the runoff for the foundation drains. Right. But those will be um, what, as uh, Craig mentioned earlier. We're working with Crediri Engineering, and that's their baby. The the brownfield nature of this site, the environmental nature of it. <clears throat> they know it better than anyone, and everything we do is going to be. We we have um, deeded. Um, restrictions related to all of that, related to the brownfield nature of the site. And um, so we have, th that's our, our guiding document essentially when it comes out. So 99% of this will not, it'll be like two separate things. And then with foundation drains, 
will be following the directive of Kadiri on that. Does that answer the question? It does. Thank you, sir. The, the only other issue that, that I know picked up on was uh, you did mention uh, on off-site on-street parking. Uh, that's going to be a huge issue in the wintertime with snow parking bans and whatnot. So it, do you guys have any plan for mitigating that? Because but parking is going to be an issue, and I, and I think as good of an idea as on-street parking off your site is, uh, it, it doesn't work for snow clearance. And so what... It, is there a plan or how do you mitigate that? So, yeah, I, I know parking is always a, a hot button and a topic that we definitely need to talk about. And when we, when we try and engineer and design the site from our perspective, um, you know, how, what's the balance? What's the right balance, right? You don't want too much asphalt, not enough building. You don't want too much building, not enough asphalt. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, putting it in context in a village setting is really important to understand. Um, and I think that's where we do need to sort of stretch outside the site a little bit and look at what's available from, for the, you know, for current public parking. And it's not just for this site, that's for anything going on in the village, of course. So it's not, you know, um, entirely dedicated to that site. Um, I think this is something we definitely have to talk through. You know, I, we've, we've only, uh, I know, we at Great Falls have been through this um, uh, a significant exercise in parking with one particular project that we did and um, uh, and sort of used the same premise for this project. And I think that, you know, as we move through this and, and talk through this design, we really don't have many options other than reduce, you know, increase parking or reduce what we're building. I mean, those are the two things that we can do essentially. Um, and I know that obviously when this project comes in, other than, you know, there's been a 15 year gap in significant activity on that site, when there was significant activity on that site, obviously I'm sure the parking spaces in and around were being used and there was traffic and there was all of that. Um, we're essentially starting over because too much time has passed in order for any of that to be grandfathered or considered in what we're doing. So, um... It's a great question, and I think I, you know, I don't. We don't really have a great answer for it, other than to say we really just want to talk it through and hear what we have to say, and hopefully you can, you know, help us uh, get to the right. I've got some right great place. answers for that. The, the other, one more, if I may. Sorry. <laughs> the, the other project you mentioned, where, me. where the where the public parking was an issue. Does that community, perchance, have uh, adequate public transportation? Because I know that's an issue for us, is the lack of public transportation. Um, how does that fare compared to past projects that you guys have, have handled? Uh, I think, if I understand the question properly, I think the, um, um, the other, they do have bus service now, okay. I guess, when it comes to public transportation. It's in a, it's in a, um, I think it's still in a, a three-year trial period, so okay. it's a brand new thing. Okay. Uh, well, 100 years ago, they had a tra you know, trolley service, but, you know, nothing. So, um, yeah, so that's, um, I, I think what, and really what I was alluding to more so on the parking exercise I went through was trying to figure out the right number of spaces in a, in a shared parking situation, in a mixed-use situation. Okay. Um, and, you know, we've gone through... The way that we did that was we built, you know, we had, a, I think we got to version 12.0 of a parking matrix and we take every half hour of every uh, day, you know, every day, uh, every week, and we just look at all of the uses and figure out, and this is a really, I mean, it's kind of an amateur way to do it. We're not traffic engineers, but, you know, you can, you know that, you know, at 1 a.m., no one is bowling, is parking in a in a spot, right? But you do know that somebody that's living in an apartment is parking there. Um, and at 3.30 on a Friday afternoon, who's, you know, what, what's going on? The offices are starting to get out, the restaurants are picking up. And so we just kind of go through that exercise and then, we, and then we heat it up and we just make a heat map out of it to try and figure out what ultimately we need for maximum spaces. And um, so that's kind of how we do it, obviously, I mean, Craig's laughing, I'm sure, because I'm explaining <laughs> how we just sort of, I think, take what we think is a logical approach to it. Yeah. Um, but engineers certainly do it differently. But I think is you know, there's a balance. So right? just to add on to that, uh, 
So I take it that uh, residents who have apartments don't have exclusive parking spaces at all. That's correct. Okay. That's it's a very key part of a plan for shared parking, and um, we, you know, some pe some residents question that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, our my response to that is, you're moving into a village center, mm -hmm. and if we have shared parking, then we cannot. Um, have numbered spaces or reserved spaces for residents and then um, you know gobble them all up that has to be shared as well now we do have some in this plan we have some undercover parking which will be uh, controlled and will be available to residents should they choose to take one of those spots um, but beyond that it's shared and we do you know as I'm switching over to our property manager side now but we really work hard to educate our tenants when they come in and we talk to them significantly about the fact like here we'd be saying you move into a village environment we you know this will be a safe place to be but if you're looking for a quiet country living then this might not be this might be too busy for you so we really just educate and talk through what's going on and we talk through the the um, you know, we will talk through the parking nature of it as well the shared parking because it's important that everybody gets it and, and for the most part um, you know, on a Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, you know, there's going to be no issue with parking. When they heat up is when the social activities really begin to ramp up, which is starting on Thursday, you know, ramps up a little on Thursday night, definitely Friday night, possibly Saturday night, depends on, you know, the area and what's going on. But when you think about it, those are, those are the really busy times, the peak times, and they are limited to a few hours, generally speaking. Um, uh, you know, each each night. So that's kind of how we approach it. Those are good problems to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so some, a couple things I wanted to point out is that actually in 2014, John Stoll made this action plan, and I was looking at it today because we're a few years removed from 2014, and one of the things that was a planning board task was to improve the regulations in the village center to promote density by reducing parking requirements and minimum lot sizes. And so. Um, you know, another thing to keep in mind is that when we increase density and um, make it a more walkable town, people aren't necessarily, you know, I mean, I can walk from my house. A lot of people will be walking in, and we're encouraging people to not use cars. One of the biggest things people in this town wanted was a walkable town. Well, guess what? Come walk to town now. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that a lot of people don't realize this, but there is that first floor parking incorporated into some of those buildings so i think people see big buildings but there is first floor parking there um the town itself and this might be a selectman issue but i would like the selectman to be aware of this is that road behind subway like that little road thing could first of all it's not paved and it's disgusting and it's got clogged drain and all this stuff but that could easily be paved that could easily be made like a one-way little street and have weekend parking there also I mean that's that's there's there's an ample amount of parking spaces you could get in there when it's just really an alley behind some buildings so the the town of Berwick has some opportunities to find parking also the, um, the existing lot adjacent to the police station uh, on that the, yeah, on the left side there lot, yeah. is that your that is that's not part of this project it so it's not. available okay. for parking at this point but it's not going to be forever a, a parking lot gotcha. um, the other thing is that you know we when we were doing our village overlay stuff, we, um, Pablo Vera loves to waive parking requirements. He's known for us. One thing that we always fought about was parking requirements, because I'm, I'm a stickler for parking, but we did make it so that, um, you know, the planning board may waive or adjust all requirements for parking. So those are, those are some things to keep in mind. I mean, I think you guys are clearly showing that you're doing the best you can, and, and we're all working together to get it figured out. And if we have parking problems in downtown Berwick, that's, that's a problem I'll take. I'll walk. <laughs> the, uh, you know, a couple of things to note when it comes to the parking. The lot that you just alluded to, um, that you know, we are sort of counting that as, as available parking now, um, kind of overflowish, if you will, and um, have no intentions to do anything with that until, um, you know, it, I mean, to, until we see what happens on this site, right? More than likely that will, you know, may forever be required as parking for this. Um, and furthermore, you know, the phasing plan, the fact that we're not going to be able to just, we wish we could just stamp this thing out and the week can be done, but the phasing plan is going to teach us a lot, you know, and we, the last thing we want to do 
we, you know, I don't mind if I get, you know, a few tenants call and say, geez, I had to park, you know, on the street and walk to my apartment. What the heck, you know, but that's the, I mean, that's the reality of, of what happens. And I think that's a good problem. You know, that's most, if you think about it, every place that we want to go as humans has a parking problem. Yeah. I'm not suggesting we should design parking problems in, but if, um, you know, we want to try and find the balance. So we're going to save that as contingency on that side. And, um, you know, and, and we, you know, we've got options there. I, I mean, if, you know, we, we could expand that lot potentially if we needed it. We don't have any plans to right now, but there's nothing going on there. So um, we have that ability. And, and the phasing as well, like I said, could, could teach us a lot. Is there anything that precludes approval or or you guys requesting to to put a and obviously not like high rise but a, a parking garage of sorts there no, I, I didn't even... want to you know that was in my head and i opted yeah. not to mention that because i don't want it you know, well, let's talk it about it like... well let's not talk about it now because <laughs> that's like, like let's talk like about like only what's on the plan <laughs> not what's not on the plan right understood but, uh, but yeah that's if you know you know i would love it if everything was going so well there yeah. that we could afford to and needed to put another level of packing up above there. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. I just have a couple of questions. Um, so there are, can you point on the on the plan to two Edgeway and six Main Street? Because those are the two four-story buildings and I want to see which buildings those are. Because I've got some plans but I couldn't quite figure it out. So two Edgeway and six Main, which are the four-story buildings. Julia, was this one? This that's is one. Two edge. Yeah. That's yeah. two edge. That's two okay, edge. Okay, so right that's here. big one's four stories. And four Main Street, you said? Um, two ed six Main Street. Six Main Street, right here. Okay, so those are the two four story buildings. Mm. Um, and just so everybody at home knows, our land use ordinance um, says 45 feet for the maximum building size, which is a four story building, but I just couldn't figure out. Um, my question, next question is for you, James. So five Main Street and eight Main Street both have first floor residential units, and that's a conditional use yep. under six point four point two point six point F. Correct. Um, so do we look at those separately? I think, I think for the next meeting okay. between Lee J and and speaking just procedurally, yeah. Um, something that the state um, should engage for a second. We can approve the multifamilies because those are subdivisions. Yes. But we can approve those through site plan review. Okay. They also have a cleanup item to to convert that to one lot. Okay. But Lee J, I think Lee J has some ideas to make it a simplified streamlined. Okay. Process. Yeah. Because I was like, how are we? Do you know? It's, it's yeah. a lot. We'll we'll figure that out. So it's all. I think what Lee J was saying, it can be included in like the findings of fact and. Okay. Um, I had just questions from the general population of the town of Berwick. Um, and, and I know this is on the final plan stuff, but people are really interested in um, what the building materials are. And building materials in our village overlay actually need planning board approval. And I know that's on the that's on your final plan. Um, but so I've I've um, I'm trying to be very active about keeping the town informed about. I was showing them the building elevations and whatever. So it didn't show what the materials were. I mean, it looks like clapboard to me, but I don't know if it's clapboard. Um, so maybe just give us a little brief overview of um, what building materials you're thinking of well it, to be honest with you, we've been so focused on site <laughs> plan um, <laughs> and, and traffic wrong answer John. We, no, yeah, we, I know, but it's true yeah. no we i really talked yeah. about it so i um i mean it's a clapboard yes yeah. you know but whether it's cement board yeah or okay whether it's a combination of cement board and uh you know, horizontal, vertical, and you know, and maybe some of the vinyl too. I okay. Mean, they make some really nice yep. looking vinyl these yep. days. So, I think, um, but our our goal is to kind of go for a, a classic New England architecture. That's the goal, and we don't. Uh, you know, these are the plans, but honestly, these are not. Uh, we we want them. They will look better than that, and and I guess you know that's that might be subjective, but uh, but those <laughs> are uh, the, the starting point. Um, with the architect, we you know we haven't gone any anywhere. The the, the critical path has taken us to planning board right. submission. Our next steps will be refining the planning board stuff while we move towards towards uh, the Perfect. architectural side of it. Um, just so I, I'm trying to keep the audience at home attuned to the process because um, you know they generally aren't super aware of what our downtown overlay asks for. So um, for the final plan. 
they will be submitted to have a building elevation for each side of the building, the materials list will be provided, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, and uh, the landscaping plan was beautiful and it was super detailed, like it's a shopping list. I, I was pretty impressed with that. And, and I'm impressed with the fact that you've managed to save um, you know, approximately 36% of it for open space. It's pretty commendable for a private, um, for a private development, I think. If every private citizen gave 25% of their personal property to the town. Imagine what that would look like. <laughs> yeah. Anybody, Mike, do you have any questions or anything? Direction? No, I'm, I'm good. Mr. Amatucci. I'm good. I'm good. I like this. All right. I got a few things. Yeah, go for it. Just to close the loop on um, parking. And Phil, it's a good point. Uh, that we have a, I mean, we're willing to work uh, with you folks and to improve on, in, in terms of parking and snow removal. Um, I think it is on the town to add the on-street parking on Sullivan Street, as many as we can get, um, Wilson Street. Street, and yeah, and and there's plenty of parking things we can do to, to make it so it's optimal for what we need. And the goal is to maximize the property value and not have open parking spaces absolutely yeah um just and and to that to that point i think there's opportunities um for great falls construction in the town to collaborate um would really and i i'm not sure how the, the underground utilities part would work if you're trying to hook into our poles because we're trying to bring those underground too but i mean we'll figure out well we, we actually have a committee we call it the dig a hole once committee <laughs> and our next task is to reach out um, to you guys, um, because we're getting crystal clear on the projects outside uh, the edge. We've identified 15 projects, um, and we're identifying funding sources, um, and just really getting crystal clear on those projects. And that includes they're they're upgrading a ton of stormwater infrastructure through their site. I think it should be on the town to pick up from School Street and get that water to Salmon Falls River. At the same time, we have a CAX project, which is a alignment of Sawmill Hill and School Street, but also includes a lot of sidewalks that front the green space and goes up um, School Street. And then we'd really love to work with you on the um, Main Street and Sullivan Street intersection. And one thing I'd like to emphasize, I think, I, I, I think the experience for pedestrians from town hall to the municipal parking lot should be improved um, even with with the traffic and and it shouldn't be any more treacherous um, i think that's it is even with an island <laughs> yeah um yeah i think that's that's all i have thank you uh, can i just uh, piggyback on that real quick i want especially the the cmp portion of it james where um Craig is working with CMP uh, as far as dealing with uh, how to get the power on site. So, you know, we're going underground on site, obviously. Uh, right now, I think they're talking about pole transformers, but if everything's going underground, then it'll be ground mount transformers. So that discussion, it'd be good to have that discussion now with CMP. And um, the, you guys are both talking to CMP, so hopefully we can, um, hopefully it's the same person as CMP. <laughs> 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 Years. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you for the presentation it was awesome we're all very much looking forward to it thank you looking forward to seeing you guys back here and seeing what you come up with thanks do you want to put a sidewalk on the on the books to do a sidewalk or yeah jennifer says yes ergo yes we will i mean and that could be another weekend one too again i'm not opposed to um if the board isn't opposed to it i'm not we've done that before um there is a precedent set where okay. we met on like a sunday morning because we were just so busy and that can be another one week i can we can co i can coordinate the yeah, email that and sounds reach great. Out. yeah so moving on in our agenda i'm going to open the second public comment session again the public comment session is open to any resident or property owner under the purview of the berwick planning board and not pertaining to any open applications or agenda items seeing nobody come up i'm going to close the public comment session and open up informational items 
I'm going to start because <laughs> I like to talk tonight. Um, so one thing I, I want to talk about, um, I know I've been talking a lot about impact fees because I think it was one of my big bright ideas that I really pushed for in 2017. And in the town of York, they, um, so our impact fees right now are dictated by the select board and the selectmen um, determine how our impact fees are spent in our town. Bye guys, thank you. Um, right now, 50% is used for okay. open space, 50% is used for recreation. In the town of York, they actually use some of their impact fees for the schools. And the school funding right now is huge hot button. It's uh, driving all of our taxes up. And we're collecting a, um, a good amount of money in impact fees by Paul. Um, so I think that it would be worth bringing to the select board um, about maybe you know, maybe scaling back some of the open space because now we're getting a lot of open space um, and then maybe putting some of that toward the school. Uh, it, it, I think, I mean, it's definitely a select board thing, but since we're the ones that started the impact fees, I think it's something we're talking about. I'll do that. Thank you. Um, and then what I was talking about that action plan that John Stoll sent out in 2014, and it must have been right at the, the beginning of my time here. Um, and I was just looking at it, and I just wanted to like point out some of the things, some of the amazing things that we've done. I was reading that, I was like, this is like exactly what we've done. So thank you, John. Um, develop form-based code for the village overlay. Traffic study of downtown, that CAC study. Inventory all the sidewalks. You just did that, and I was looking, you know, you can go online um, to the berwickmain.org website, and you can look at the inventory of sidewalks and the next sidewalks they're gonna make, and the, you know, it's all on there. Um, construct and maintain public trail at Penny Pond. Secure access to the Lower Salmon Falls River below the dam. Uh, secure and provide public access to the Salmon Falls River. I mean, we've done all that. It's it's pretty incredible w what we've gotten done. And then, you know, all this in the process. And that's all I wanted to say is that, you know, sometimes it's easy to, to sit back and talk about what's not being done. But when you really sit back and go back into the archives and look at what's done, it's like, holy cow, we really have done yeah, a lot. I'll second that. Thank you, John Stoll. I mean, yeah. he... He's the reason why I'm here. One yeah. of the reasons why I'm here. So. Yeah. That's all I have for information. Anybody else? Random? Yeah. Okay, go for it. <laughs> She's like, you're ready? <laughs> so we're getting a lot of phone calls about violations in town. Um, it's a lot of neighbor complaints. It's a lot of um, landlord complaints. There's a lot of stuff that we can't take on because they're civil issues. So I just want to put that on the record and say it on camera for the, you know everyone to hear. Um, I'm going to be sitting down with Jerry. Um, he's our captain of our police department next week. And we're going to be reviewing um, a specific ordinance, but we are going to start reviewing the ordinances a little bit better, making some changes um, to fit the needs of Berwick. Some of them are pretty old and they don't really make sense, like finding someone for $100. Well, when it was probably written, $100 was a lot of money. It's not anymore. So, you know, if we want our town to be well kept, cleaned up, um, for code to be able to take care of certain issues, then we need to make that happen. So we will be reviewing them and then we'll be taking them to James um, and then going from there. So I just wanna put that on record with the town as well. Um, last time, a couple of months ago, I made a comment about, you know, people starting to clean up their yards. We have a lot of junkyards in town. Um, it looks good, people are cleaning up, people are doing what they're asked to do. Um, sometimes it takes a letter, but they're complying. So, you know, um, from the code's point of view I just want to say thank you for people that are complying with that so that's all I have awesome anybody else all right well then I think we need a motion to adjourn well if there are no further issues for consideration from the depths of the Berwick Town Hall the esteemed Burgess meeting room I would like to make a motion to adjourn all in favor <laughs> <laughs>